two, one. That was the perfect, clap. actually. I think that was the greatest <laughs> clap anyone has ever clapped. Hello, everyone. Marty alongside Yahtzee and Nick, and we are here to talk a little topical punch, this time on Metaphor ReFantasio, uh, the brand new sprawling JRPG from the folks behind Personas 3, 4, and 5. Uh, as you probably know, Yahtzee and I are, are huge fans of the Persona series, and we have put dozens upon dozens of hours into Metaphor, uh, while Nick is more, I would say, a Persona casual you're a persona, persona <laughs> novice, uh, haven't gotten to play Metaphor yet, but we figure you're good here to provide kind of a more skeptical position as we try to uh, suss out whether Metaphor is more than just quote unquote high fantasy persona. Uh, so right off the bat, Yahtzee, you've, you've put thousands of hours into this. Do you think this game is more than just high fantasy persona? Well, thousands of hours? Jesus. Did I say thousands? I think I yes. meant dozens. Oh, it's no. It's you that's thousands. put thousands yes. in there. <laughs> Don't twist yes. that on other people. <laughs> Yes. Well, I was wondering where it was going for a while, but I was mm-hmm. noticed, hey, it's introducing, like, time slots. And then I was like, hey, the main character has just had a weird awakening sequence and, a like, a powerful version of himself popped out of his bonds. Yeah. And then I was pretty much uh, settled in. I was like, yep, yeah. I guess we're, u- guess we're using the excuse of a new IP, uh, not as the opportunity to do something completely new. As for if you should play it expecting a Persona experience, yes. It's got all the ingredients. It's got the day by day thing, the interspersed with dungeon crawls. It's got the party, the relationship mechanics. It's got the social stats. If you're a huge fan of the list of monsters, Shin Megami Tensei games always uh, pop out for their games. Then you're gonna miss that because uh, yeah. that's not that's not in evidence. Instead of personas, you have this thing called archetypes, which is an entirely new suite of uh, super powered forms. Uh, named after standard, you know, you know, classes. Like, like it's, sort of, it's sort of more like the Final Fantasy V job system, where you assign yeah. jobs like the sniper or the the knight or the uh, cleric, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the wizard, to yeah. different party members, and that changes yeah, it, what so, abilities so they it can. doesn't it doesn't have like the the creature collecting of both of those games. No, not, not at all. No, it's it's it basically Persona with a few gameplay wires crossed. The creature collecting is entirely uh, directly linked to the socialization mechanics. Every character in the game you can make friends with has like archetypes associated with them, and they become more powered up the more you befriend them. Yeah, so each each confine, each character is yeah is related to one branch of the kind of archetype tree. You unlock their base level, and then when you fulfill that, you can get the next version of it. And then usually the third level of jobs require you to be like, oh, you need to have maxed out this job, but then also have at least a level ten in this job. So um, it it quickly becomes a little bit complicated as you're mentally being like, oh where do I want my character to eventually be? So I need yeah. them to, even though they haven't been using magic, I want them to learn enough magic so they can unlock this crazy cool job. Um, I, I agree with you, Yats, that I feel like on the surface, all of the persona ingredients are there. Like you mentioned, it is the uh, it is the time management, uh, the combat feels similar, the dungeons have that similar feel. Obviously, it's the same uh, character designer, the same uh, the, the composer, and the same director as the Persona games. But everything feels just different enough to where this isn't rebranded Persona in my mind. This definitely does feel like its own thing, even though it's clearly built upon the foundation that they've been building since Persona 3. Well, it's certainly a completely different setting. And yeah. uh, as for whether it's as good as Persona, what I always liked about Persona is that it felt like an alternative to the standard JRPG bollocks. Well, let's just say a lot of the standard JRPG bollocks comes back when it's a bloody fantasy setting. So you got the standard, who oh, uh, gather your party, they're all different adventurers in the fantasy world. One of them's a sworn knight, one of them's the one furry animal creature. Uh, you go through the world and there's a bit where you go across the ocean to an island and there's the bit where you unlock the airship and blah de blah de blah Whereas the strength of Persona for me was always, it was a lot more relatable, you know? It was a contemporary setting. These, uh, these are normal people who are like, uh, cast into uh, weird situations that you have to uh, come to understand uh, with the, alongside them, as it were. And also, you know, it's very, very stylish visually in a very contemporary, jazzy, modern sort of way, and it's got very good music. The same composer or not, Fantasio's soundtrack feels a lot more generic fantasy to me. You know what I learned? The battle theme, there's a language being chanted in the background. It's Esperanto. 
Really? Yeah, I that's mean, what I learned. Because I was like trying to listen. I'm like, what are these lyrics? Esperanto. I mean, I don't know what the fuck benefit one yields from having <laughs> lyrics in Esperanto. Cool. I think about the music in the shower. Uh, <laughs> Nick, I know we've been doing those uh, the long playthroughs of Persona 5 over the past few years. Uh, and, and Persona 5 is definitely, it has that, it is very anime. Uh, for better or for worse, in your, uh, you know, your, your party is, is a bunch of high schoolers. The uh, confidant system, you know, tends to unfold into romance options. Uh, it gets very, very weeby in that sense. I would go as far to say there's far less weebiness here. It is far more kind of Game of Thrones, War of the Roses, high fantasy, just because the characters are a little bit older. But also, as far as I've seen at the 60 hour mark, there is no romance there's this is this is an unhorny game uh in in a surprising way from the developers of Catherine and persona uh like what does does that sort of difference nick like the idea of we're being taken away from modern uh tokyo and instead having a more sort of broad sweeping fantasy story like is that appealing to you or do you think that's going to lose some of the identity uh i mean obviously i think it loses it's not persona right so i think it I'm not sure losing the identity is the right way to maybe phrase that, but um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a much bigger fan of, of like fantasy JRPGs. I, I like to play a lot of those. Uh, so when we were talking on Firelink the other night, you said that the story is much more grounded uh, in like a, a fantasy setting, and yeah, the Game of Thrones and the, a lot more pol- politics kind of stuff. That got me. Definitely yeah, it's interested. Uh, it's as it's, grounded as any game about a giant floating space yeah. Democrat can be <laughs> but i mean it is ultimately instead of being like we need to change the hearts of the people of tokyo yeah. so that they see the evil their ways it is uh, a king has been assassinated and an, uh, there's a democratic election coming up and we need to win the election and possibly assassinate the person who's in first place because <laughs> they are evil it's a magic democratic election let's yeah. be like uh, uh, overseen by a god which yeah, is the where it gets a, a bit weird. Similar to our current political climate. <laughs> pretty, yeah, it is. And everything you're doing in the game is kind of you are winning over the people. Yeah. So you do things and you grow closer to people and you see a little meter that's like, oh, more people trust you and, and you are moving higher on the ranks of the of the potential it's, candidates. Yeah, it's very, very reminiscent of that uh, public support uh, counter that Persona 5 had. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like right. how the, your the fan site or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the people well, who yeah, they, like your social media following and all that. Um, yeah, with the with that in mind, with the story, is it broken up into sections like Persona is, or is it one, oh, one yes. overarching story? It's broken up into sections, but I would argue that the sections feed into the main story yeah. more than like Persona tends to feel episodic yeah yeah when you're like oh now we're going after the corrupt business owner and now we're going after the mobster whereas this it feels like every kind of major month where you're going after something feeds into that core uh, election story would you agree with that well the interesting thing is that it's sort of structured around a road trip which Mm -hmm. is not like persona 5 it's sort of reminiscent of persona 5 strikers if you ever played that yeah yeah. Uh, where you and every other candidate is basically on the campaign trail around the world and you're all trying to like race each other to the next city to like uh, get a head start on the next trial of the uh, of the candidates and so every time you get to like a new city that's like the new chapter there's usually like a little intrigue you have to get to the bottom of there's a dungeon you have to work your way through you, you got probably get a new party member in each main city yeah, yeah. you get you're given a little time and the sort of the road trip format sort of makes it unfold naturally uh, as a sort of linear sequence of chapters rather than the slightly contrived chapter yeah uh setup of the persona games so yeah is there, but is there as much is there as much downtime in between action because that's my oh, biggest yes. hold up with persona oh no that's oh, my yes. biggest hold up with persona 5 it does the, every time it does i do the, a chapter and then there's like yeah. six hours of talking I'm like <laughs> it does the same thing where you've got like the one dungeon and the game says okay you've got 15 days to complete this dungeon <laughs> do that however you want yeah, that's what Persona players like. <laughs> there are a lot of side quests where you can be like, all right, I'm going to spend three days to go on a trip 
outside of the city to this dungeon and on the way there is a village we can visit that has like this yes. cool little vignette and oh here's this amazing site where the store oh, the the party's gonna stop their ship and they're gonna take a look at this like gorgeous site that has this like still very painterly image uh, yeah. and you get a little little background on the world and I, I like those moments that that offers a lot to me you do have to factor travel time into side quests like if there's okay. like 15 mm -hmm. there's like three days left and it'll take two days to get to the side quest and back mm -hmm. you have to bear that in mind when you're mid journey there are opportunities to do things that up your stats and up your character like your social like network connections what i liked is that you have to get the weather report to see that make sure the weather's not gonna be bad on the day you get to the side quest hmm. because the weather being bad gives you a massive disadvantage in combat like most persona games well i guess it's not a persona game but like most games that, that by these guys uh, it takes a long time for you to finally get to the point where the game becomes about what it's about. But what it's about, like, at its very core, is road tripping, I would say. Mm -hmm. That's, like, the central, unique selling point that sets it apart from Persona. Because Persona, at least from the hours that I put on a Persona 5, when you get in between chapters, it's a lot of the kind of... Obviously talking to people and work using that time to level up your, your character to be ready for that next dungeon. Is yeah. metaphor structured the same way as that, or is there more variety in what you do in between those? Oh, I mean, yes. There's a, there's a variety, but it is ostensibly you are yeah, same, uh, either uh, updating or you're, you're upgrading your stats, like your core, your wisdom, your mm -hmm. uh, your your courage, your tolerance. Uh, tolerance is a big thing because there's uh, there's like a bunch of different fantasy races in the world and there's certain races oh, and yes. other races and certain marginalized yes. races. It's um, very anime racism, isn't it? They're all very basically, anime racism. They're all basically pretty white guys. It's just some of them have got cat ears and some of them have got <laughs> horns. <laughs> They've got and... angel wings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that being said, uh, I'm, I'm curious, Yasi, to hear your take on, uh, they shut off the battle system and sort of mm. uh, dungeon exploration and combat. And one of the striking things was before you enter combat, there is a real time portion to dungeons. So you're running so around tough. dungeons, you see the enemies on the field, you can attack them. And what it does is if you are kind of at their level or below their level, you can give them a couple hits and then you can get like an attack of opportunity. So you start the battle and yeah. they start the battle stunned and you get a first round of attacks. Uh, but also if you are over leveled, one thing I like is that when you're going through these dungeons, you can just kill the enemies before you even enter combat. You hit them once yeah. and they die and you get XP from them. And I really like that. That reminds me a little bit of like, you know, in Earthbound, you get strong enough. And if you yeah. attack an enemy, that green swirl comes up. Or even in Persona 5 Royal, yes. you could get that ability to just like zoop right through an enemy. And it just felt really good. And you're not wasting your time fighting scrubs. Kind of broke the game, that ability in Persona yeah. 5 Royal. That, that was like the easiest way to grind. You'd basically just, yeah. just like rode around Memento for half an hour and then get like five just, levels doing just running all. into things with your truck yeah it's yeah. funny it's funny you mentioned that because like i've been playing through uh pokemon violet and you can just send out your pokemon to destroy lower level mm. ones and just keep leveling them up so just i like that them. yeah i like that that's yeah. becoming a trend in jrpgs to cut out some of that grind where if you, yeah i, if you I, are I like lower it. level just throw it through yeah so yeah, that's that's kind of cool. It's like a semi adds a sort of like a semi real time element to combat, but of course it goes to like the standard turn based combat if you're fighting something who's mm -hmm. equal or higher level than you. And what I kind of don't like is that if uh, that that system gets turned on you, like you get attacked by an enemy before you attack them, it sort of disproportionately puts you on the back foot for the next fight because yeah. uh, Persona as well as well as this game. It really feels like a game where if you ever get hit by the enemy in a standard battle, you're kind of playing it wrong. You're supposed yeah. to be exploiting weaknesses and, uh, you know, getting the ambush on them basically every single time. Even the standard battles can really fuck you up in their first few rounds if you... Yeah, even on it. even on normal, if they manage yeah. to hit your weaknesses and, and you know, your main character gets knocked out, like, it's it's very easy to be on the ropes in what felt like a normal battle. Yeah, if, if they ambush you. And that feels yeah. like, uh, you know, an excessive punishment for, like... Like a single mistake it always yeah. has done for me yeah and then uh well once you're into combat the other big thing we talked about the archetypes uh the, there's a bunch of synergy attacks if you have two complementary archetypes on your team of four at any given time so mm -hmm. if you have uh 
it's like a, a sniper and a wizard. You can use two action points to fire like a volley of magic arrows that completely like obliterate people and there's there's every almost every combination of jobs have these synergy abilities and well uh, not all of them because i don't, I don't know yeah, some people just be like i don't synergize yeah. with anyone because because i never really de- look into what the synergy power is going to be before i equip things with people it's uh, I generally just let them surprise me when I get into a battle. Yeah. Like, oh, that sounds like it would be useful. More than once I've had lineups where multiple characters have just said, uh, I don't have any synergies. Sorry. <laughs> we don't get along. I will say that is one of the overarching uh, things in the game is that there is a lot of information and sometimes it's either cumbersome to parse through it, which items menus are just huge and, and sprawling. Uh, the same thing, Like I feel like it's a bit cumbersome once you get a bunch of jobs or archetypes to sort of view that tree and to be like, well, where am I on this tree and where do I want to get to and which character am I? Uh, and then even the same thing, I don't know if there is a way in menus to just see what all those uh, synergy attacks are. Like, No, there is a way to look up what synergies you get because it's weird. The party menu and the archetypes tree is kind of kept weirdly separate because initially you can't access the archetype tree from the menu. That's something mm-hmm. you unlock. But yeah. I do remember there is somewhere in the menus where it tells you what synergies uh, are available yeah. and what other party member archetypes you need to yeah, activate I guess them. It's kind of a Russian nesting doll there. Um, I do like, you know, I'm, I, neither of us have finished it yet. I'm just super intrigued by where the story is going. Mm. Uh, some really great uh, twists along the way that, like, I'm totally rethinking things that have that have happened, and I like the idea of. Like you said, it's not traditional persona enemies. You're fighting kind of traditional fantasy enemies, like goblins and dogs yeah. and wolves and stuff. But then these bosses are these giant, like, Hieronymus Bosch monstrosities yes. that are just referred to as humans. And they're like, oh no, a human <laughs> is here. And it's this, like, yeah. giant fucking terrifying monster. Uh, and, and so I'm very intrigued by, you know, the game starts off and it asks you to put your own name in before you name mm. the main character. So... Like it's, you as the player are being referenced, so it feels like there's a, a fourth wall magical world. Yeah, Some, uh, something's gonna uh, happen later on that's in the game. <laughs> in a fantasy <laughs> world. It's a pretty fucking standard anime trip, this isn't it? Where the the mis- monsters are mysterious, and it turns out all along they were the remnants of humanity, or they were created by humanity. Uh, I want to say Stellar Blade did that, where it turns out the monsters were actually the remnants of organic humans. So I'm suspecting the Twitter's going to be that this is like a far in the future post-apocalypse where all the animals have evolved into humanoid uh, forms and the humans have turned into hideous Hieronymus Bosch monstrosities. There you go. Set this time code to see if uh, yeah. if, if Yahtzee's prediction comes through. Once again, it just sounds like current day world. It's yeah. just nothing <laughs> different. Yeah, they held a mirror up to society. Yeah, yes. but, um, but there are things, but yeah, there are things I'm not sure where the plot's going to take because a lot of times when I'm watching anime stuff, you, you take one look at a character and you go, yeah, that's the villain. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the villain. And yeah, that's the mentor who's going to die in the first act, like fucking Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. But then at the moment that I'm in the game, I'm in the bit where you were on the way to the island to look for pagan relics, and you're being joined by two of the villain's henchmen, who are both mm-hmm. dog boys who speak in Liverpudlian accents like the Beatles. And I honestly don't know if they're going to take those dog boys in a direction of being the next major villain or the next uh, party member. It could go either way at this point. They're very well dressed dog boys, I will say. I like yeah. the pea coats. I like the fashion in this game. I like the character design. It is a little like a little furry. You gotta you gotta be willing to put up with some some animal stuff. Uh, but if you're willing to do that, I like how the characters are designed, and I really like how the characters are written and performed. Um, I don't feel like there's really a weak link in the bunch. Not only party members, but um, sort of confidants and everything. Uh, and I like those confidant stories. Like they kind of unfold and take you to surprising places. And there's some like genuinely emotional moments I've had. What's the character in Persona 5 that always annoys me? The blonde hair Ryuji. guy? Ryuji? Ryuji? Yeah. Who will be oh. my Ryuji? And- there is, oh, like, uh, there's <laughs> interesting, but he's, like, yeah. more of, like, a noble knight who's your who's your sort of second Yeah, man. I mean, Persona 3, 4, and 5 have sort of the archetypes, like, slacker, idiot, friend, girl, and hot girl. But yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, this game starts with a uh, non-slacker, noble friend, who just seems to have things together. Yeah, and, uh, he was like born, get... he was born rich, but he's not an asshole yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, then you get serious girl and cute animal party member. Yeah, and you're like your main sort of your Morgana or your your you know your main uh, 
mascot, I guess, is Galica, who's like a um, Tinkerbell kind of fairy. Yeah. Who's not annoying yeah. whatsoever. Isn't screaming at you to go to not bed all the man. time, which is nice. No, exactly. It's uh, great. Not a pie man. I'm in, I'm not not a pie soul. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wish she. Well, sometimes I wish she'd put some trousers on. Oh. <laughs> Well, you yeah. know what? You're, if you're a little Tinkerbell fairy, you don't gotta wear pants. You're fine. She's, I guess, the character that they're hoping to get the erotic fan art of right yeah, off the bat. I'm sure there'll be plenty of it. Uh, they, listen, yeah. they're like, we don't need to put horned up stuff in our games because our, our yeah. hardcore fans yeah, are doing I mean, do it for that's us. Like, yeah. it's, that's like the one horny note, and it's the character you couldn't physically have sex with. As well. I don't so, think yeah, she's I guess it horny. Is a... She's as horny as Tinkerbell. That's not that horny. She's got horny notes. <laughs> It's like you're tasting wine, and you're like, oh, I have notes yeah. of horny in here. I mean, the, I mean, yeah, the rest of the game is very unhorny. The main characters, like, everyone talks about how young they are, and if, basically every other character they interact with is an adult, so there's no... So any sort of horny element would be a bit off-putting. So there's not the journalist from Persona 5 in there? No, there's, not, there's no journalist or teacher where you're kind of like, ooh, this, this is a little uncomfortable. Yeah, so uh, I will say uh, I like that the, the main character is voiced, um, no, and really. doesn't talk as much as the other characters but will yeah. chime in and I think that's nice I think it's I, I really like the main character and at least like you can choose whether their responses are like asshole responses or you know oh I'm noble I'm doing this for the good of the country kind of responses um, and I, the, I think the voice acting does does lend a little bit to it yeah I think this um, kind of hits all the notes I was I was interested in because I, I, I don't mind persona like but I definitely prefer, uh, prefer fantasy Mm -hmm. stuff and so the combat of Persona is why I keep coming back to it for the most part because I, I like the story I but like the combat. yes yeah that's that's definitely a, that's definitely present here it's yeah. the it's very similar yeah that's that's basically I think what I and, and probably other people that maybe aren't is into the anime style stuff I'm probably going to be interested in. Well, I think uh, Marcy is underselling the anime. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, in this it's for the same developer as Persona. I know what I'm getting into. But. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, major characters with cat ears and big tits. Yeah. Fairies who don't put trousers on. Well, listen, what I'm, what I'm just excited for is to uh, finish Persona 5 in 10 years on stream <laughs> and then get to Metaphor <laughs> <Yeah, 4 laughs> <take it>, <clears throat> on Switch 3 you'll be I'm, I'm like as I said I'm getting to the tropical island bit and I'm not expecting the game to have a beach scene but it wouldn't like uh, it wouldn't surprise me at this point is it a Persona game if all the guys sneak into the girl side of an onsen and hijinks ensue I think not that happens like three times in Persona 4 happens a lot <laughs> yeah. happens a lot listen that just happens when you're bumming around the country with friends yeah overall uh, like I said I'm about 60 hours in I'm, I'm just really enjoying it top to bottom it, it, it once it has its teeth sunk into you it is that persona thing where you want to do oh just one more night just one more night just one more yeah. night and Which remind yeah. me how many hours does it take to get that those, those teeth into you before you get to actual gameplay like persona 5 oh uh, it's like i mean it is what? it is a lengthy intro <laughs> yeah. but like, i think yeah. the intro is good and the intro you can play right now the free demo is out on all platforms and your save transfers over which is nice when, so you can get that all the, the demo way the end, by the way uh, I think it, you have I think you have Hulkenberg like I, I believe the demo goes all the way almost into the first dungeon the first like main dungeon in the church yeah you know, that whole road trip stuff I talked about that doesn't get That's introduced until after the first dungeon yeah. so yeah, yeah. So which long, again if anyone has played Persona you know dungeon. like uh, until you have a four person party the game doesn't like really become the game it is um, yeah but yeah. I, I, it might take a while but I think everything leading up to that is, is pretty damn entertaining so so, so time, time the first dungeon. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't fucking know. Let's say <laughs> that's many about, hours. That yeah, let's, let's say about three hours to get to the first dungeon, and then another go. what, four or five hours to get to the end of it. Yeah, yeah. Damn. But what a seven <laughs> hours that is! Yeah, as long as uh, it's entertaining. <laughs> exactly. I don't exactly. know. I don't know if Persona 5's intro was super entertaining it was well, interesting. you like the characters yeah. i think that's the thing is, is and i think yeah. these characters and the, and the scenario is super um like sounds, it's really intriguing and own. yeah and some like crazy things happen uh early on which which oh yeah know. i mean magic democracy Spoiler. is kind of nuts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> magic lo i love a nice magic democracy in the year 2024 yeah uh awesome yeah that about uh does it for us so obviously we'll have a lot more on metaphor refantasio yahtzee i'll have a full uh, fully ramblematic uh um, surprise dog surprise dog oh, surprise dog oh my god if only that dog was a person and we could recruit to our party he was behind the microphone the whole time incredible two surprise dogs oh this is the greatest topical punch there's ever been <laughs> 
Uh, excellent. Thank you guys so much uh, for, for Yahtzee Nick. This was Marty. Thank you guys uh, for watching. Uh, we hope you enjoy Metaphor Re Fantasio as much as we do, and uh, we'll see you next time. I mean, Bye, hell, we're not, we're not chilling the game, man. Just like rain it in a bit. Oh, I'm showing the game. I'm showing the game. Show Go to Bye. Go to bigger than yes. I mean, uh, I suspect my review is going to be uh, going to balance yours out a bit. Uh, I mean, isn't that usually that's our that's our dynamic? Yeah, I think, pretty much. I mean, you know, I just don't want I people. Go, to I you go low, we meet in the middle. I just like suddenly a vision of the, all the comments going. Well, well, I guess they're getting paid by fucking whoever Keep, made these games. Atlas, please, please pay us. Please give us, please give us money. Like disclaimer, Marty is a massive weeb. We're not putting any of that in. Oh, Jesse, take it all yeah. out.